This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In today's video, I'm going to be tackling this mid-century teak dining room table, and it is a total disaster. This thing has clearly been abused for some time, needs a lot of work, and to be honest, if you're expecting to see perfection at the end of this video, <laughs> that's not happening. As much as I would have loved to restore this to factory condition, the damage was just too significant. I did my best though to give this another life, even though I ran into a few hiccups along the way. Stay tuned, because there's a lot of work ahead. My name is Angie, and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. I had actually purchased this table from Facebook Marketplace back in May, and I'm finally getting around to it. I knew that it was in rough condition from the photos, and then, of course, when I went to pick it up, I was able to have a look at it. And I've kind of been putting it off because I knew this was just going to take a long time. But first, let's open it up and have a look at what I'm dealing with here. So first and foremost, obviously, the top is completely shot. There are large stains, areas where the finish is gone. A large portion of the edge banding is missing, and I don't know what happened here. This is an extendable table, so there's two leaves that slide out. The leaves themselves aren't in terrible condition. They do have some watermarks and some scratches. And the legs themselves are a little bit rough also. The legs are solid wood, so they can just be sanded down, but everything else is veneer, so refinishing this is gonna take some time and care. Almost all of the edge banding is going to need to be replaced. The first thing I need to do is take this apart. Always be careful if you have different size screws in a tabletop, because if you accidentally put it back in the wrong hole and try to screw it in, you could screw right through the top of your tables, so make sure you remember where each screw goes. It was obviously an issue here at some point along the way, because someone has moved this bracket from the original location. And I actually noticed the same problem on the other side, so my guess is the leaf was extended and someone put too much pressure and it ended up tearing the veneer underneath the table. It's quite common for these tables to have leaves that are usually in better condition than the main tabletop. And because they're often tucked away, they don't darken as much. So you can see here the finish is a lot lighter than the, the top was of the main part of the table. For me personally, when I redo a table like this that has leaves, I refinish the leaves at the same time. So having a look here at the underside of the actual top. This is mahogany veneer underneath, which is not uncommon in mid-century furniture to have teak on one side and mahogany on the other, but you can see a ton of stains. This would be from liquids flowing down over the sides, sometimes food. A lot of times the underside of furniture is left unfinished. And while I'm not going to spend a lot of time here redoing it, I am going to very lightly sand to remove as much of these stains as I can, and I'm going to actually apply a coat of Odie's oil to the bottom of this later on. This will just help prevent this from happening again. I'm using a pretty fine grit sand pad here, and I have my surf prep sander turned down to the lowest setting. You can actually control the speed of this sander, which is really nice because in this situation, I'm not removing too much of the wood veneer. I need to see what I can do with this top because if I can't fix this top, there's no point in doing any of the rest of the work. There are a few different ways that they use to finish teak furniture. The ones I come across most often are oil-based finishes and sometimes lacquer. Lacquer can be sometimes a little bit funny with teak because it's a bit of an oily wood, but with this specific table, I'm pretty sure they used conversion varnish. I've never seen a finish on a teak 
piece of furniture this thick and hard. Oh my gosh, this was so hard to get off. I was going to use a stripper on the top and I decided to scrape it and uh, it was a workout. Once again, I have my sander turned right down because I need to try to preserve as much of this veneer as possible. There's no doubt that these stains are going to need some oxalic acid. If I were to try to sand through these stains, which I unfortunately see a lot of times with beginners that aren't realizing that they're working on veneer and they try to sand a stain out and they go through the veneer. So a good rule of thumb is try to remove a stain without trying to sand it out. In this case, that's by using oxalic acid. Now this is a wood bleach, and it's really good for taking certain stains out, particularly organic stains. Also things like black watermarks. You dissolve the oxalic acid in hot water, and I generally will keep adding until it stops dissolving. You need to apply it to the entire surface, not just the stain. If you put it just over the stain, you're going to have a nasty surprise because that's the only spot that will lighten and you'll have the opposite problem. So with oxalic acid, you apply it, let it dry completely. And you can see here after it is dry that a lot of the marks still remain, but you still can't really tell until you rinse it off. Oxalic acid has to be rinsed off with water and then you let the entire piece dry again. So while I'm doing that, I'm also doing other things, like getting to work on these legs. Like I said, the legs are solid wood, so I can just sand the old finish off. And it's kind of funny now, looking back as I'm doing the voiceover for this, how easy the finish was coming off of the legs in comparison to the top. And <laughs> there's a reason for that, but you'll find that out later. So I'm giving some attention also to this part of the frame, where again there's more of that liquid staining. This is also lined with mahogany veneer, and it's gonna look so much better with some Odie's on it. Again, this is a step that you don't have to do. Clearly the manufacturers didn't even do it, but it's something that I like to do. I was really careful while I was sanding not to disturb the maker's mark, the sticker there. Always leave those on a piece. Even if they're tattered and torn, you can try to glue it down or put a piece of tape or something over it. It is a really important part of a piece's history. And even more importantly for some people, a piece's value. Okay, so in the time it took me to do the legs, the top head dried. So this looks fairly good here. You can still see a bit of the stain, so I'm gonna hit it one more time with oxalic acid. The thing about this is usually if it doesn't remove a stain significantly by the second or at absolute most third time you use oxalic acid, there's no point in trying it any further. Like it's not gonna come out. So on the leaves, I put some of my usual Circa 1850 stripper and if you're familiar with this channel, you've seen how well that stripper works. You can see here, it is not budging this conversion varnish. This stuff is tough. They use this because it was a very hard wearing finish, but as you could see from the top, it's not infallible and it can be damaged and unfortunately it had to come off. But it was extremely difficult. So I ended up doing a couple of coats of the stripper and eventually got it a little bit softer where I could actually scrape it off. Back to the tabletop. So this is after oxalic treatment number two. I'm now rinsing it off with some water. There are still some marks and the stain is still there, but I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna give it another very light sanding. And hopefully we can get this to a point where it's at least salvageable. I already know it's not gonna be perfect. 
People ask me all the time what I use to apply the Odie's oil. These are Merca Merlon pads and this is a 1500 grit pad and I just cut that into strips of four and that's usually perfect for a project. So my initial plan was to do this whole thing with Odie's oil. I've done it many times with Teak. But when I applied it to the leaves, it was so light in comparison to the legs and I may need to do some color work on the top to deal with the stains, I'm not sure yet. If I do have to use a toner, I can do it over Odie's oil, it just it has to be completely dry first. This isn't going to be possible with every type of oil finish because Odie's oil is not an oil like mineral oil is or hemp oil. It's actually a tongue oil based finish that belongs to a group of finishes called hard wax oils. Because these oils dry out completely, it is possible to do other finishes over them. Like I said, it wasn't my intention with this initially, but because of the remaining stains, I did opt to add some toner to the wood. And this is what it looks like after the toner. It's a lot closer to the original color that you saw, not so much the completely sanded teak. And while it doesn't hide every single scratch and gouge that remained, it does camouflage it for sure. So a lot of this edge banding was damaged and this isn't normal edge banding like you can buy in a store, this is actually fairly thick. The price of teak is crazy right now and for me to go and buy a board long enough to do strips would have been quite costly and because this is more of a rescue mission than a restoration, I'm going to go with what I have here. This is the more common teak edge banding that you see and you can buy them pre-glued like this is or without glue and then you can add your own adhesive. I like the pre-glued because it's quite easy to apply. You just use a hot iron, making sure to move it along and melt all of the glue. Now I need to say that normally this step would be done prior to finishing the top and I kind of wish I had waited. The reason I didn't wait is because I needed to see if the top was going to be salvageable before I went and used this fairly expensive edge banding. So just to note this is not normally the order in which you would want to do this. I like to take this block and just really burnish it and what that does is it helps smush the glue around underneath and that helps give it a much stronger bond. Once I have the corners trimmed, I usually take the iron and reapply some heat just to make sure they are glued down properly. And then I can trim the excess from underneath. Holding something like a board like I'm doing here makes it so much easier to cut without risking ripping it or tearing it. And then once everything is trimmed, I just took a little bit of sandpaper out of fine grit and just lightly sanded the edges of all of the edge bending. After that, I was finally ready to add the Odie's oil to the underside of the top. The Odie's is just amazing on mahogany wood grain. Now that the leaves are also done, I was able to seal them with lacquer as well. And hooray, finally time to put this back together. A 
Houston, we have a problem. The legs don't fit in the holes. What the heck? I realized I sanded and refinished the wrong legs. Not long ago, I purchased a second completely trashed teak table and the legs are almost identical. And I didn't realize it because the ones I needed were kind of tucked away in the corner. So I just grabbed the ones that were closest to me forgetting that they belong to another table. So good job, Angie. <laughs> I had to go ahead and refinish these legs. At least I'm ahead of the curve for the next table. Well, I have mixed feelings about this. Clearly, there is a huge improvement and this piece can now be used again. So that in itself is a win. I would have loved to be able to restore this completely back to as close to factory as possible, but this is just one of those situations where the damage is too severe. Sometimes when the alternative is the garbage bin, just trying to get something back to a usable state is sufficient. I'm happy with how this turned out, even though there's still some marks and dings here and there. Someone is going to love it, and there'll be lots of family gatherings and meals, laughter and drinks. Just make sure to use coasters, please. Let's have a look now at how this turned out. If you've had a chance to have a look at my new website, you'll notice that I don't have my store set up yet, though it is coming. Squarespace has a very powerful platform for building a commerce website. It allows you to link to your website from places like Etsy and Shopify, as well as many others. I'll be linking products from both Teespring and Printful. Squarespace makes it so easy to integrate. It gives you full control over which payments you want to offer. I'll be using PayPal on mine. You can set your online store to whatever currency you want and even helps you set up your shipping rates. If you're looking for a great way to sell physical or digital products, go to squarespace.com. You can check out the platform and even set up your whole site. And when you're ready to launch it, go to squarespace.com slash transcend furniture, which gets you 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Thanks for watching.